Okay, Diane, we are live on YouTube. That's great. Well, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this evening, March 4th, 2021, for the uh, CB10 Parks Committee meeting. We'd like to welcome the representatives from the Parks Department. And I know that we have um, the uh, Director, uh, Chris Yandoli, is with us, and uh, his uh, team of Denise Mateo and Aurora Davis. So tonight we are going to be um, uh, presented with plans to um, for the renovation of JJ Cardi Park, as well as Owl's Head Playground. And so, with no further ado, I will turn the um, turn the meeting over to Chris, and we're anxious to hear what you have to say. Great. Uh, again, thank you for having us. Um, much appreciated. I actually was. Um, just looking for the agenda. I can't remember which project we're, we want to look at first. I think the J.J. Cardi Park was first. J.J. Cardi. Okay, so that's um, Denise Mattis uh, from our uh, design team. So I can turn it over to Denise uh, to share her screen. Um, Denise, are you all set? Um, all set. I'll share my screen right now. Great. And uh, we can get started. Um, let's see. Can everybody see my screen okay? Yes. Okay, great. Looks good. All right, awesome. All right, thank you everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. My name is Denise Mattis. Um, I am a designer, uh, landscape architect with the Parks Department. Uh, we are looking at JJ Cardi Playground. We have $5.4 million for the project given to us by our city council member, Justin Brannon. Um, it's about two acres site that we're gonna be redeveloping here. So we're looking specifically at the playground. Um, here's an aerial view. So from the asphalt, from the fence line of the asphalt um, baseball area, from that line over to, and I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but over to the edge of the property adjacent to the uh, parking area of the adjacent property. Um, land use in this area, commercial, as well as you all know, residential and um, uh, institutional. Um, one thing we should note with this particular playground is that there aren't really many playgrounds within a five to 10 mile sure. walking distance from this site. So it's, um, it's definitely stand kind of stands on its own. So when we go and look at our existing conditions, a lot of what we what we want to focus on uh, with this site, um, existing uses. We have the playground equipment, which obviously needs to be updated, um, and listening to your what your wants and wishes were with the community um, input session. We're looking at the playground equipment. We're looking at the spray shower. We're looking at reconfiguring the area so that it's more safe and secure for the kids to play. We look at uh, tree condition, and if some of those needs to be need to be removed, we look at the drainage. We look at the sunny areas of the site and that, how important that is, and the open space that we uh, have presently. So we go out with every site and do a tree inventory. Um, as you can see, this is kind of an odd shaped site. Um, we did go out and, and look at some tree conditions that need to be removed along the back. And as I was looking at programming and how we would fit play equipment and swings and sitting areas and those types of things that were discussed, I did look at um, removing a few trees. They are the smallest trees on the site. We may even transplant them because we do have room for those. But in order to kind of fit the programming, we are getting rid of a few trees, but we will be putting more trees in actually to, um, to compensate for that. So some of the pictures of the existing conditions, here's the entrance in the East End, the flagpole and monument, which we will not be touching as it was restored a few years ago. The existing play equipment, you'll see we're gonna be looking at the drainage and how we're, we'll fix that drainage and the pavement so that it, it all drains nicely. Looking at the redoing the pavements, giving these trees a little bit more room to survive uh, as we look at the new design. Um, Let's see here, just more existing conditions. Uh, we'll be looking at removing the play equipment and looking at programming a little bit better and how to fit these items in. Um, comfort station, we are, the conversation is not part of the uh, reconstruction. It's up to pretty much the fence line here as you see it. 
So at the community input meeting back on October 8th, um, we heard uh, many, you know, many voices and um, looking at reconstructing the playground and looking at a wide range of accessible age and appropriate play opportunities, looking at reconstructing that spray shower and making it a little more fun and adding drinking fountains. We're going to provide positive drainage again, looking at those drainage areas, looking at some bio retention areas if possible, which was heard by a few of the residents. Um, looking at seating areas and how they interact with uh, other other locations, improving park security and lighting, and then, as our as many of you know, we um, are um, reinforcing the commissioner's um, parks without borders initiative. So we'll be looking at those entrances and making them more welcoming from the street. So when we start playing with how we're going to make things work, we do this bubble diagram, which you've probably seen from other sites that we've brought to you. So I kind of look at things that relate together mm -hmm. and what, how, which uses should be, you know, connected to each other. And from that, we come up with the design. So I'll kind of walk you through this um, again, over, uh, overhead bird's eye view of the site. Um, comfort station here. Can, can you all see my cursor as I, as, as I move this? Yes, I can. Okay, great. All right, so I'm gonna start from the, from the right side. So as we come in here, we're looking at kind of a passive space, pavers, um, kind of a, a, a nice open lawn here with the existing trees, with the two existing trees that are there now within that lawn, but a nice open lawn, passive area. People can sit and you know picnic and maybe throw a Frisbee or something, but passive over here, um, pavers kind of in, and seating area in front of that monument. We've, We've made it a little bit smaller, but we've still made a nice little sitting space and kept that separate now from the play. So as you move through the space here, we've included picnic tables and um, some game tables in here. And this area in here is now the play, play area. So we've got uh, two to five play, ages two to five, um, another large unit here for ages five to 12. And the intent here, here is to kind of keep all of the play area within this central court space. So you've got benches that surround the area. You've got some picnic tables here. We still kept some of that open lawn because as you know, beyond the existing play area, there were some nice lawn space beyond that, those, um, the curbs that were there. Um, we did add, as you can see, this darker green. This is some more, these are planted areas and we're going to try to incorporate those bioswale areas that were suggested. Um, here we have our central kind of spray shower area. We also have these painted games, which I, I'm excited to show you this little portion of uh, part of the incorporation of that into play. Um, here we have our swings. Swings, as we've said before, take up a lot of space. And the way the site's kind of configured, it's, it was a little tricky trying to get these things to fit, but we were able to get four bays, actually five bays of swings, two buckets, two, two bays of buckets. So four buckets, uh, four flat swings, and then also an, AD, uh, an accessible handicap swing, ADA swing. As you move through the space, then kind of away from the, the main play area, we've included an area here, which um, includes two ping pong tables that was heard um, as towards the end of our conversation, when we were having that community session, there were one or two people that had asked about ping pong tables. So we were able to include two ping pong tables. And um, here we have a fitness oh. area, which um, includes what I'll show you, it's called the Thrive piece, which has a number, a number of pieces that kind of work off of one piece and then some additional fitness pieces. Um, and that continues then over to the end of, of where our reconstruction was. Oh. So um, we also look at fencing. We did have a seven foot high fence. And again, um, promoting our Commissioner's Parks Without Borders uh, initiative, we were putting a lower fence, a four foot fence around these areas here, as you can see around the outside. We do need uh, fencing around our swings, which will be three feet. And then these open planting beds will have a two foot low, two foot planting bed around those um, single bed, single planting beds. 
So this is one of the, um, the that element again, that, that painted game element. Um, I worked actually with uh, an occupational therapist on um, a project that was done for an elementary school. Um, these classroom floor decals, which were done in order to promote um, a number of different things uh, in terms of a child's growth and development. So basically what happens you can travel along these kind of painted lines. As you can see here, we have um, the colors in blue, light green and sandstone. And you can see them here on the, on the drawing, on the blow up. Uh, the yellow painted line continues through and then it kind of connects to our spray shower, which then dashes through and comes up here to the top to a star. That's all flush pavement here. We have a blue, uh, the blue color and then the green, and then they end in these hopscotch leaves that kind of connect and bring you towards the playground. Um, our spray shower, we uh, intend on, on using these two silhouette fixtures that kind of flank as you come through that little space here. We have water jellies for the younger kids and then we have this water tunnel. Um, and we're looking at using these two colors of concrete, this blue and this kind of adobe tan. Play equipment, we've gone with a, a set of bold, two bold colors, um, two bold kind of families of colors. So the two to five are gonna be, it'll be two shades of green and a yellow with a hint of the blue. And then these really cool kaleidoscope kind of small roofs that make some really interesting um, colors on the pavement. We're gonna be using um, gray and black safety surface um, for all, all of the areas that includes the swing area, the fitness area and the two playground areas. For the five to 12, we're looking at blues, more in the blue family with some accents of yellow. So as you can see, both have kind of these yellow accents between the two. This is that thrive piece, that fitness piece that um, I was describing before, along with some of these, some plyometric boxes, parallel bars and chin up bars. And we, kind of keep within our parks vocabulary of site furniture. Uh, here's our ping pong table, our 39 World's Fair bench, picnic table, which is accessible, game, concrete game table and chairs also accessible. We will be using the high low drinking uh, bottle filler with drinking fountain, as well as the drinking a bottle filler, sorry, uh, it's a bottle filler here with a dog bowl, um, bike, Bike racks are located in, at the the, uh, the front of the park to the right. I can show you where those are again, the end. Um, light poles, which kind of match the other fixtures within JJ Cardi Park. Uh, the pavers that we intend to use in front of the flagpole are these uh, ground tutor pavers, but in this kind of shape. And our plant palette, um, some, good. some low shrubs, uh, also some perennials here as well. And that is, that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Quite extensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very um, impressive. So questions? I'd any like committee to... member that would like to pose a question? I can't, uh, I can't see. So Josephine, I'm going to rely on you if you can see. Yeah, I'm gonna, um, if we could take down the, the share, the screen share, just so we can open sure. up the questions. We can't, it's hard to view both. <laughs> That's fine, no problem. Thank you. Sure. Okay, um, I see um, a question from Marty. Wanna unmute yourself? Hey, good evening, everyone. I got a question from the little guy. Where are the slides, he says. Where oh, are the slides? slides are on the play equipment. There's there's slides on both the, the big unit and the small unit. There's actually one that's a spiral slide. Um, I'd have to look again and see how many slides, but there are slides on the units. There's some straight and there's some spiral slides as well. That work for you? They're yeah. fun. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Any any other comments? Uh, Zaris has a question. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, okay. Okay. My my um I have two questions. Um I heard how many swings are there compared to how many swings there are now? Um, the swings that are there now, let me just look at the, the and I asked because today, which was not a perfect park day. Yeah. Every swing was taken in the kitty swings and all but one was taken in the big kid swings. So as you know, swings take up a lot. We have actually, we have the same amount 
as we did before with the addition of an accessible swing. There are two accessible there's now. Um, is there, there's one on each set of swings because I have, I have, two, okay. I have two sets of bucket. Okay. So there's four bucket and I have two sets of flat swings and then an, a, a, another bay, which is an accessible swing. Um, from how I have historically seen the use from when my son went there to when my grandchildren went there and mm -hmm. when I pass it on a regular base and basis, I really believe you need more. The bucket swings are like the kitty swings. Right. I believe you will need more. More bucket. I recommend that. Okay. All right. The, I, my, my only concern is that we are really tight with space. Okay. So I will try my best, but, um, as you know, as we've ex we, I've, I've kind of maxed out my area, but I've tried to get as many back in as I could. So I will certainly take a look at that and see if we can't get, we can't squeeze any more in that location. I, I would say the bucket swings are used more than the flats. And the, the flat little kid swing. swings are used more than the big kid swings. Okay, so that could be an adjustment too. Maybe we can fit another bucket or two in there. My, my other thing is I'm very happy you have lots of green space, but um, this is a kiddie park. And the people who use the park between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. in the morning are dog walkers. Okay. Um, and um, I would, I'm very happy to see that on the little hill there, you have trees. And I think it would be very helpful if you had low, densely planted evergreens, a variety of them, which would have a very beneficial effect for everyone who lives in the neighborhood because um, they're good for all of us. And it they would help absorb any pollutants that uh, uh, some of the emissions coming off the traffic from the bridge. Okay. And anything you can do in any grassy area to make it child friendly, child safe, mm -hmm. and, and remove those potential problems with um, pets. Pets have a place, but not in playgrounds. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you, you, you're getting rid of the whale, aren't you? What's that? I'm sorry. The whale. There's a... And actually the whale is going to our, um, the commissioner is actually compiling all of the animal art, the animal, um, concrete animal features, mm -hmm. you know, that were so well, lo well loved and, and as Commissioner Stern had made so prevalent back in his day. So um, there is actually, we're actually compiling um, areas for all of the, those animals. I, I was also impressed by your map because it is an incredibly well used play area. Well, the hope is to put all of those play, air, all of that play area together so that a parent isn't running back and forth as they are now between the two, two sides. So hopefully this kind of brings, you know, brings a lot of the, um, the security or at least the, the, the eye of where the parent needs to watch their kid, you know, yes. to one area. Thank you. Denise, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, if I can address the committee first, please. Justin? Justin Hyatt. Uh, yeah, um, this may have been discussed before um, and I may have missed it in the slides, but do we have like a time frame of when we're gonna begin construction and then a time frame of how long this is gonna take? So, so typically, um, you know, not COVID, you know, delay. Um, well, typically we have, we have a year for design documents. So, the hope is to have these contract documents completed by October. And then we have a nine month procurement period, which is when those contracts are reviewed by legal and the mayor's office, and then those are compiled. And then once we have that, then they'll go out to bid and then, um, then construction would start. So um, safely, we're looking at, Summer fall 2022. 2022, something like that. Yeah, something if, around fall. Yeah, yeah. For completion, you're saying for no, completion. No, 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 when... that's for start of construction. For start, for start. Yes. yes. 
So then one year from there would be fall of 23. Right, so completion for the, for the contracts, that's usually a year for construction and that would put us at fall 2023. Awesome, thank you. Sure. Okay, are there any other committee members that have any questions? Josephine, do you see anybody? No, nope, yep, I don't see anyone. So do you wanna to move to the public? I know that uh, John Rosanna had asked to speak. Oh, um, yeah, I wanted to talk more about Alice Head Park, but I just wanted to uh, ask a question that someone asked in the chat. Does this project extend past uh, to the basketball courts and the ball fields on the west side of the uh, comfort station? No, this actually, the, the, the fence line of the play equipment area where those, the, the more west side of the play equipment, I, the, that area that leads you, it's right before you get to that large multi-purpose. I think it, there's base, there's a baseball, there's painted yeah. baseball. Uh -huh. it's, it stops at that um, 16 foot fence or whatever, 12 foot fence that's there now. Okay. Yeah. Roman, you can unmute yourself. Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, Denise, just want to yeah. say you did a great job with the presentation. Excellent yeah. job. I love the, the graphics. Everything looks great. I don't do community boards really frequently, but today I'm here and I think this is a, a great day to discuss the two parks that I was pretty much raised at in Bay Ridge. Um, and I can't wait for the Owls Head Park. Anyway, let me get to the point. One, I'm kind of curious if there's like a, a bigger grand plan where uh, you guys are allocating funding to the basketball area and to the uh, to the baseball area because that area is completely barren and it's very empty and sad and it's a great opportunity to reprogram it and bring life over there and kind of like extend the yep. walk all the way from the promenade, connect it through Cannonball Park and then take it over to the basketball courts. It's we, a great we opportunity. Have Yes, we have, um, we're working with the, the, the borough commissioner's office. Chris, I don't know what, if you want to chime in a little bit, but we've been working with the borough commissioner's office and looking at the master plan an overall master plan for this whole, you know, area going from the playground all the way to where the tennis courts were redone. So we do, we are looking at that, you know, as we can, we can secure funding. We're certainly looking at how these areas work together. And as a matter of fact, one of the reasons why it was important for me to add that fitness area, that fitness component to the overall site is because we're looking at this project being done a couple of years from now um, and not obviously knowing we can't predict the future as to when future funding comes into place, we want to make sure there's something there for, for everyone. So, you know, trying to keep similar uses together and having something for everyone at this stage of the game was the important um, factor in, in kind of figuring out what to do with the site. So just. Yeah, just to build on that, that was a great answer, Denise. And, and thank you for the question. And I would just say, you know, we do needs for every community board and we certainly identified that space as a need um, to finish off this park. And, you know, we were, rely on funding from the council member, or other elected officials, the borough president, people like that. So the council member has been great uh, to the neighborhood. He's got a few projects um, in motion, but we certainly will continue to seek funding for that. And, you know, we, we sort of envision that space as a action sports, sort of maybe a skate park, maybe a synthetic turf field. We're not sure, but when we get funding, it's important for um, for everybody to stay in touch with the community board because we'll come back and we'll have another public scope meeting um, when we do get funding. And it's really not up to us. We just, you know, we we um, we want to hear from what the community wants in the space, and then you know we go from there. So when we do get funding, we'll make the announcement, and and everybody will have a voice and be involved. But, um, I was going to say that like Roman has to make sure he comes back when these like when these visioning sessions and input sessions are you know, started so we get everybody's uh, ideas. I would love to come back, um, but really just on the side note, I think that area has been barren for a very long time. Oh, yes. I mean, this funding is way overdue already. This should for come sure. in. I mean, it's been like 20 years that the fields have been like that. You know, that the basketball courts have been like that. It's a huge open space. Imagine what it's gonna do to the real estate value. It's just gonna bring it up. I mean, you have nice condos alongside on Fort Hamilton Parkway, and then you have a barren, ugly asphalt field. Where, where are these people in the community board meetings now? I mean, 
who can we speak to to get more funding? It's way overdue. It's um, it's the council member that where I would start, and and in in his relatively short time as a council member, he's been really great to park. So I mean, I can't speak for him, but he he knows the needs of this park, and we've met with him and expressed our needs for the for the site. So just you know, knocking on his door and staying in touch with the community board and involved is important, and and we'll continue to seek funding and um, yeah. do what we can. Roman, I would um, ask you, and I guess um. Uh, Josephine, are our minutes or our recorded meetings from the fall um, still available? Yes, uh, they are. Yes, because if uh, the back in September, I believe, September or October, we had a, a report from the Parks Committee and we went through each and every one of the projects that is currently part of the capital plan um, in, in our council district. So I would invite you to go back and possibly look for that information. Um, if not, Possibly, um, we can get that information from the community, uh, yeah. community board I, office. You know, I, I can share that as well. I mean, you know, Roman, the community board each year reviews um, capital and you know, expense priorities, and you know, we don't receive direct funding, but we certainly do review and advocate um, and, and appreciate the, you know, the allocations by our local city council member. And it's unfortunate that the New York City Parks Department doesn't have a capital budget. Um, and we rely upon our elected official support and we'll continue to advocate. Um, I, I, I do have to um, echo that our councilman has done a tremendous job with keeping the parks um, you know, at the top of the priority list yes. in terms of funding. And so uh, we can only hope that we will get more, but uh, we should be very happy with what we've got already. So, uh, right. Doris? Yeah. Um, um, I noticed that you, in the entry area, you described that large building as a comfort station. Basically, I would say 10% of that building is used as a comfort station. Right. And the right. rest has been abandoned. It was originally a preschool program. Um, and I think it would be, a, with the work that you're doing, which will really make this a, a very, very attractive park, that we can have um, a parky in that area and games and other equipment that would be available um, for our, our children as they have in other parks. Because all it's used now for now is all the park people go there for lunch. And they park on the sidewalk. Yeah, we do. Um, we do use that space as a as a field office currently, and I agree with you. It's one of the ugliest buildings we have, and it's definitely an eyesore. Um, there, there's programs through our recreation department that don't necessarily need a bat um, a building, but what they do need is a bathroom, and we have that there. And if we have that, um, we have what's called playground associates that come in and do programming for children. You know, um, not so much in the COVID age, but once, once we're past all this, we can get a program like that there again. And that'll be, you know, really a nice compliment to the park that Denise has designed. So I'll put that on the list for our rec team, you know, when you. we're allowed by the state to, to do programming like that again, that we can get something like that going there. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Diane, I also want to make sure we have for the record, there were some questions that were placed in the chat. Um, first from Jean Ryan, can you make sure to keep wheelchair spaces next to the benches? Yes, that's that's definitely been done and incorporated throughout. That's one of our, you know, kind of mission statements that we, on every site, um, the companion seating. So if um, I can put the plan up again, but there's, we've incorporated, I've made sure to incorporate that almost in every area, that there's companion seating, not at the ends, but within the bench, bench rows so that it, you're not at the end of the conversation, you're within the middle of the conversation. Great. Um, also, the uh, chess tables need to be accessible? Yes, they are. Okay. And there's a lot of advocacy to keep the whale. I and know. Someone uh, mentioned maybe getting a petition to keep the whale going. So just wanted to share that. Find, we, we certainly have a space, I think, if, if we, you know, if it becomes a prevalent thing that needs to be <laughs> saved, um, I certainly can find a spot for the whale. Okay. Excellent, let's do it. Whatever uh, it takes, let's do it. Okay. Okay, um, let's see, Teresa um, is yeah, asking that if, one. 
if there'll be space for children on the spectrum to calm down and you did address the, the wheelchair swing. Yes, the play equipment does provide um, area also for uh, areas to calm down kind of that quiet space that's necessary, so. Great, okay. So I've gone through, uh, doesn't look like anyone else has a um, hand raise on this topic. So Diane, I'll turn it back to you. Okay, and then I guess I'm gonna turn it right back over to Chris um, so that we can hear about uh, Owl's Head Park Playground. Sure, so uh, next up is our designer, Aurora Davis with um, Owl's Head Park Playground. And just to mention before she gets started, that was a question from the community board and it will likely come up. The courts um, at Owl's Head, um, I know I keep saying this, are the worst courts we have in Brooklyn. Um, they're funded by the council member. They're not part of the scope of this project, although we're doing both sides of the playground, which is amazing. Um, but those courts are funded. They'll be, I think Terry, they'll be in design shortly. Um, but those are also gonna get uh, renovated completely, you know, all new surface, all new fencing, all new backboards, rims, everything. So that'll be an amazing project to sort of finish off that whole area of Owl's Head. But you're gonna be really happy with this playground design, I think. So um, there's no questions, Aurora, if you wanna get started. Hey everyone, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. So my name is Aurora Davis and I'm a landscape architect on the Brooklyn team. Um, this is the reconstruction of the playground at Owl's Head Park. We have $4 million um, mayor funded and it's about uh, 0.7 acres. So just our goals are to upgrade the active play capacity, facilitate passive use and community events and enhance and add to the environmental amenities of the site. As you all know, where Owl's Head is located in Bay Ridge, um, residential area. Um, there's not too many playgrounds within walking distance. We did a lot of uh, research on the history. I won't get into any detail. Um, it's pretty cool history of the area, but um, I'll just say it became a city park in 1928. And before that, it was a privately owned estate. And these are just some kind of cool old photos of the Bliss, the original Bliss estate and some construction photos from the 1930s. Um, this is just the location of the playground within Owl's Head overall. The existing areas, um, the site towards the south contains the play equipment and the swings and the site towards the north is um, a very large spray shower area with some play equipment. And just the site analysis um, showing the uh, damaged asphalt, some drainage issues, and then just old outdated play equipment and the spray shower area is really oversized and um, underutilized space. And uh, we, we did our tree inventory, um, a lot of really beautiful mature shade trees in this park. Some, the existing playground, and then the existing spray shower area. Uh, the park entrance to get to the playground. Just a view of the park from the playground area and then um, the other, photo showing some of the drainage and erosion issues, which we will be addressing. Um, and this is an exterior view of the spray shower area. Um, it's kind of very fortress-like right now. Uh, so we will, we're gonna keep the low um, perimeter curb wall, but we're gonna take down the steel picket fence and the uh, brick columns. Um, and this is uh, the vegetated buffer area between the spray shower and the basketball courts. So this is the proposed schematic design. Um, I'll start from left to right. Uh, 
In general, we're keeping um, basically the same shape because of all the mature shade trees um, and also all the nice lawn area. We didn't want to um, mess that up too much, um, but we did expand um, the play equipment area out quite a bit more. Um, so in the Southern Moor play area, there is the two to five play equipment, the five to 12 play equipment, and then a much larger swing set. Um, I think currently there's five uh, bucket swings and two tire swings. And in the uh, proposed design, there'll be four strap swings, four bucket swings, one accessible swing and one um, companion swing. It's a parent child swing. Um, and then the area in between um, is a little hex paver plaza seating area. Um, around the play equipment will be concrete walkways with benches. And then around those areas will be stormwater capture swales. Then jumping to the other side, um, like I said, we are gonna keep the low uh, brick curb wall, um, but we're gonna take down the fence and the brick columns. and. The center will be a spray shower area with some overhead spray and some ground spray, and then some additional uh, play circuit climbers around the spray shower area. In the um, kind of northeast section is a quiet play, sensory play area um, for kids that maybe don't wanna be running around and just wanna be kind of quiet and maybe just play alone or just with one other child. And we'll have some little kid tables in there and some ground play panels. We'll have uh, picnic tables um, along the side and then um, benches around the perimeter. And then we are going to take that vegetated buffer area and expand it. Uh, we're gonna close off one of the access routes to the basketball court to kind of decrease the amount of cut through between there um, and make it into just kind of like a mini accessible nature trail, nature play area. Um, this is just our fencing diagram. Um, we're really taking down almost all the fencing that we can. We're just gonna have a low three foot height fence around the play equipment for children's safety. And then um, just an 18 inch high uh, fence for to protect the plantings. So this is uh, two views of the five to 12 play equipment. Um, this is our color scheme. We wanted to keep it a little bit um, a little bit more muted and subdued to kind of in keeping with the uh, kind of natural aesthetic of Owl's Head. And these are two views of the uh, two to five play equipment. And this is a view of the kind of climber play area obstacle course-ish around the spray shower. These are just some uh, photos of the existing site. Um, as I said, the, the low brick wall, which we're gonna keep, we're obviously gonna do all new benches and everything, but we're gonna do the 39 World's Fair style. And then um, this is the overlook, uh, the hex paver um, that we're gonna incorporate in the design. Um, and these are some of the site furnishings, the light pole, uh, accessible picnic tables, the 39 World's Fair bench, drinking fountain, hex, hex pavers. Uh, our color palette, um, the safety surface colors, green tan and the marble tan, and then the play equipment colors, safe, uh, spray shower concrete colors, and then some of the ground uh, spray and overhead spray. And then for plant material, we'll, we're gonna have stormwater capture swales. So these are some of the uh, species that do really well in those kinds of sites um, with good for season interest. And then for the native forest area, um, some native plantings in there. And that's it. Beautiful. Should I... Um, Stop sharing my screen. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. 
just as a point of clarification, you will be you will both be submitting your um, your PowerPoints to us so that we have that as a reference. Would you be able to send that to us? Send mm -hmm. them in the morning. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Or Thank after you. this meeting, but. Okay, right. committee members, any comments? So I guess we have to. Um, um, let's see, Doris has her hand raised. Um, I'm, I'm, could we see the first slide that shows the total cost and the number of acres that it covers? Sure. I mean, I can just tell you. Oh, you can it, tell me. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, it's a uh, four million. Right. And it's uh, 0.7 acres approximately. Okay. That's, why is there such a disparity? This is a very, very expensive cost per acre compared to JJ Cardi. Well, I don't know if there's I can. There's a answer. lot. I, I mean, I can answer that. Uh, um, there's a lot more open space at JJ Cardi. This is um, more of a compact space. So there, the acreage, it's, it's a little bit deceptive, um, but you know, they, they'll both have the same amount of play equipment, play value, amenities. But there's a huge disparity in the cost. I think we're, is it because like that JJ Cardi has like such like a green area surrounding exactly. it essentially and that a lot of what I noticed for Owl's Head was it's a lot of pavers. Um, a lot of the area seems to be rubberized as opposed to JJ seems to be less rubberized because there's more like, you know, just cobble spaces is that part of the, the cost difference and the play and, and the amount of play equipment as well, I imagine. And there's open lawn at, at, at um, Denise's project. Her, her uh, incorporates tree pits. So there's, you can't just look at the acreage and the dollar cost and, and, and it's a, a little bit apples and oranges. Yeah. My, my size is really just the play. It's just those really just those two playground areas where I think Denise's includes a lot more lawn space. I think if you look at Aurora's too, you're right, Aurora, the, the amount of play equipment and the, the kind of peripheral areas, it's not just that play equipment to the one side, you've got the extension of that other area that's mm -hmm. also more create, you know, that more kind of adventurous play equipment and the trail area as well. So that's it's actually that's pretty big going. for a playground. Um, Owl's Head, I'd say is like, much larger than what our typical playgrounds are. Well, I, I find that the cost difference astounding. But I would also ask, there's a serious drainage problem there. Mm -hmm. What are you, I mean, in order to get into the playground, it's what one board member has called Lake Owl's Head, Lake Bliss. It's, um, um, is anything being done to address the drainage issues in that area? Yeah, definitely. We're going to do uh, new uh, drain utilities, um, and we're also going to do a lot of stormwater capture. So we're going to be addressing that fully, for sure. How does also, that work? There, there, there is no drainage. There, there is no sewer system in that park. There is. There is? Yes, there's yeah. a stormwater. It's just not functioning. It's old. So we'll be repairing it, replacing it, and reconstructing it. Yep. And as Aurora said, she's going to be also installing passive collection areas that'll collect water, So, which it doesn't have at the moment. So um, I think there'll be a profound difference in the drainage. And I imagine Just, the bioswales also are like a key component to that? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Just to add to that, there's a separate contract in place that's going to be doing the majority of the paths in Owl's Head. So there, you know, all those pictures she showed are going to be repaired with a, a separate contract. And, and again, I would say you have four bucket swings. I think you're underestimating the need for bucket swings in any playground. Okay. Dean? Hi. I, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Sure. I, I go to the parks, all the parks in Bay Ridge a lot, but not in the winter, you know, because I have grandchildren 
And I would like to speak up on behalf of the tire swings because they are so popular in uh -huh. Owl's Head. And they are the one play equipment that kids who, who know each other or kids who don't know each other play cooperatively in them and on them. Uh, they learn how to ask a stranger if they can join them. There are th one to six kids on each tire swing. I've spent hours and hours and hours watching at both tire swings because I'm supervising my grandchild. And they are just the one piece that is so popular. And for all ages, from like four or five till 15, and the kids really learn to share and take turns. And it's not like one swing where you're on it by yourself. It's very, very popular. So anytime when school isn't in session or after school, those tire swings are so busy. And I think that they should, and it's the, as far as I know, they are the only tire swings in Bay Ridge. So I think they should be kept some kind of way. I don't, um... uh, well, um, I love tire swings. My kids love tire swings. They're a little bit old for it now, but um, the reason you don't see a lot of tire swings and, and for better or worse, you know, uh, we live in a litigious society and there's been a lot of accidents. They're not, they're not, we don't use tire swings anymore, unfortunately. Really? So, you could say the same thing about bucket swings and regular swings. Well, in those areas, we make sure that they're, you know, there's large clearance areas. You need much more clearance area for a tire swing. Yeah, listen, I, I agree with you, but it's not something that we use anymore in our parks, unfortunately. Um, and when we reconstruct the playground, we're going to, you know, try to put in as much um, exciting play features within the play equipment that I think, you know, this is new play equipment. It's, it's, it's well-designed. It's designed for that interactive sharing play. I think, I think um, when Aurora's project, which, um, you know, it's, it's a, a great design. I, when I think it's completed, I think you're going to see the same sort of elements that um, were, were, were seen in that um, bucket, I mean, in the um, tire swing as part of the play equipment. There's, there's lots of different climbing elements. Um, so. Are there any spinning elements? Yeah, there are some, there's some little kids spinning things where they can sit on things and they spin a little bit. It's a fun, it's a fun playground design. Um, when, when you get the PDF, I guess you can take a, a closer look at the equipment. Okay, thank you. Sure. Teresa? Hi, I know that um, I sat in on the first meeting uh, when we started to talk about what we wanted in this park and there was some children there, but um, the parks in Bay Ridge are really, really utilized quite a bit by a lot of children. Um, are we gonna have enough swings? I mean, the water area looks great and everything, but it is a big thing with the swings whether they're little kids or they're uh, high school kids at this point, they really do like that area. Um, do you really look at the parks in action before you actually think about what to put and where to put and how to put? Yes. Yeah, we, we do for sure. Um, and we, we are putting in a lot more swings than what's there. Um, I mean, I, I, I think the um, increasing the bucket swings, we definitely consider doing that. Um, I, but um, there, there will be more swings overall. Aurora, could you just repeat the number of swings that you're going to, the, the proposal includes that one kind of fast, I couldn't write it down. Sure, um, so right now there's five buckets and the two tire swings. We're gonna be putting in, and I'm saying, 
but we might do an, an additional bucket instead of a strap, but I'll just okay. say what um, we're thinking four strap swings, four bucket swings, one accessible swing. And then we are thinking of doing one companion swing. It's a parent child or two friends, um, two little kid friends. Um, they're, people seem to really love them. Uh, the two people um, can face each other and swing together. Um, so there'll well, be a few. And child swing is really good for children with needs. Yeah. Comfort yep. for them. You said accessible. Um, the accessible swing, are you talking about the swing where you can roll up the wheelchair right onto it? Or are you just talking about like what kind of accessibility do you mean? I think for children with more mobility issues that maybe can um, have trouble maybe sitting up you know, as well, or just they're, you know, they can't hold themselves up as sturdily. They just need a little bit more support. So it's that deeper bucket type of swing. Is that what you're talking about? It's like, yeah, it's like a they're larger. larger. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we will not have anything for any child in a wheelchair in either park. Is that what you're telling me? Well, no, they're the play equipment has, uh, is wheelchair accessible. Um, and of course, all the pathways, the- But they can't swing. We don't, I guess I'm we don't. sorry, I'm just a, I, I, I'm a very big advocate for children sure. with needs. So mm -hmm. I get very defensive and I do apologize. No, no, However, not at all. I feel like our children that are in wheelchairs that possibly can't come out of a wheelchair for whatever reason, mm -hmm. um, can't swing at all and will now have to sit as usual and watch other children swing. And I think, you know, I've seen them in a lot of parks and I, I think it's it's something that should be considered. Yeah, um, we, we've, um, th that's a great option, having that uh, roll on swing. Um, it's, it's a balance though, because if we have that, that takes a lot of space and then we'll lose other swings, uh, spaces that for other children, uh, there's an accessible Aurora, like Aurora said, she put in an accessible swing. Um, you know, it's, it's one that you have to place the child in, unfortunately. But again, I think, you know, accessibility is, is uh, one of our, um, you know, foremost missions, um, as Denise said, and we consider it in all our playgrounds. We have a special um, accessibility expert on staff who reviews all our um, plants. He's in fact in a wheelchair, so he looks very carefully at, at accessibility for for individuals in wheelchairs. Um, and um, so it's something that I don't want you to think that we don't haven't considered it or don't consider it. It's it's a primary focus of our agency. And um, um, I think Aurora has put in enough elements for um, all children of all abilities to enjoy her playground. Um, just to mention with Cardi, we do have both units ramp, have, have ramps that bring you up into the play equipment so that it's not, it's, the child wouldn't have to transfer out. Um, it does bring you up to a certain point. They ramp, they can ramp and bring themselves into the play experience with the other children. So that was considered on both the two to five equipment as well as the five to 12 um, and then we also look at a lot of uh, ground play integral to it so that there's that interaction as well. Um, there, there's, again, my swing is the same as the one Aurora has. And just to reiterate, as Chris said, our biggest, that's probably one of our biggest challenges is to try to put as many swings as possible without taking up so much room that the rest of the programming becomes this little postage stamp. So um, we try to, we try to get that balance in there as best we can. And I have to tell you, Aurora's, Aurora's worked really hard on her owl's head play equipment. And I think it's, it's going to be really exciting um, what she's got out there and so many different types of play that we, the typical play, equipment that you've seen, um, this is, it's, it really is gonna be a fun and exciting park for both of them, but um, truly it's, it's a great design. 
I, I agree. I like the design. I think it'll be great and beautiful. However, I think that we are leaving out one set of children and that saddens me a bit. Um, I know it's difficult to do, but I always feel that if someone else can do it, so can we. Um, so, you know, I, I, like I said, I know you worked hard. I could see that. And I do like the design and I like the new play equipment, but I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just a little saddened that we are leaving out one set of children. It's something we definitely need to continue to, to, to speak to and, and look further and try to incorporate better into our playgrounds where we can. Absolutely. I agree. Diane, could I ask a question? Yes, that, so who's that? Jim Johnson. Yes, certainly. Um, or or, or how, how big is the nature trail area? How many, what's the square footage of that? Um, Just ballpark. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is, well, are you familiar with the existing little vegetated area? Yeah. It's just a little bit bigger. I don't know, maybe 25% uh, bigger feet. than what's there now. Uh -huh. so, so it's really, it's really miniature. Um, it's just kind of, I know that kids currently kind of like to run around there. Yeah. So we're just going to kind of redesign it. So it's a little bit safer and um, accessible and, um, you know, a little bit more organized. Uh, is it, is it, is there, uh, is it, oh, is it gated in? Um, is there fencing on both sides? How, how tall is the fence? Is that the like two foot? The only fence is going to be between um, the basketball courts and, and the, the edge of the vegetation. Um, we're not going to, it's not going to be fenced on the inside of the, that playground area. So they would walk right into the area. There'll be a trail. Um, and no, there'll, be a, it, there'll be a curb. It's just um, a curb, not no fencing. We weren't intending to put any fencing. Because I'm just, you know, for, for, and also there's no irrigation, correct? No, we're not going to be doing irrigation. Okay. Um, and the other, so I really make suggestions oh. rather than you guys, I feel some, in a way you're almost on trial and oh. I don't know how fair that is, but I'm, my suggestion is that you guys, uh, there's a, there's a group of volunteers in there that would probably be really, really helpful in, mm -hmm. um, number one, you know, they're doing it for, I think 25 or um, 25 years. So reaching out to them would really be important for them to feel included. Um, as I know, as a volunteer from the other park, and the other thing is that they would be extremely helpful um, with yeah. that area. And even um, even if you, for the area, if you did fence it in mm -hmm. with a gate on both sides, with a nature trap pathway, um, they're pretty responsible to the point that you could actually have that open and closed because if there's no irrigation in there and you know, um, you know the amount of foot but, um, you know, the amount of play in there between that and dogs accidentally getting in there, I'm going to say the life expectancy of most of those plants is tick tock, you know, for, um, you, you know what I mean, it'll look yeah. really nice in the beginning, but you sure. have a group of volunteers in there. And if you're going to create a garden that that's, that's that pretty with a nature path, you can probably have it opened and they're pretty responsible. So I'd suggest reaching out to them. It would really, really be a win-win. Great. For that nature area yeah. and, um, and also for, you know, the preservation because they'd yeah. be watering it and everything. Also another suggestion for them, and I'll just make a plate. Um, if you do do all this, if you could have hose water access, mm -hmm. even if you had a responsible person there in the park, the volunteers, one of the big problems that they have is that they have no hose access. Okay. And literally if you did that, the nature area would be watered regularly by them. Uh, they're, they're pretty responsible and they would be thrilled by having such a, you know, such an opportunity to have an area that, that, and the more protected that their area it would be, would be great because, you know, of course viewing it would be fantastic too. And just opening, the, you know, and they would be responsible with opening and closing the gate. That's great. That's just all just really, really great yeah. info. Yeah. We'll definitely reach out to them. Okay. Thank you. For sure. Um, uh, let's see, who else? Uh, Justin? 
Um, I actually wanted to talk about the nature trail as well. First off, definitely second Jimmy there. Uh, the volunteers in at Owl's Head are just incredible. Um, I just wanted to know, is the nature path going to be paved? Is it going to be dirt? Is it going to be like wooden decking? Um, we're still working on that. Um, it will likely be paved, uh, maybe like um, an asphalt, just like a not too imposing asphalt pathway. Um, we want to make sure it's accessible, but we also want to keep it pretty simple and subtle. Um, yeah. And um, then same question as before. Uh, you got like a time frame on this, uh, a date of really when the you same, plan on beginning? The same schedule as, as JJ Cardi, actually. Um, so probably start uh, summer, fall 2022 start construction yeah and whenever you I, guys... I will caution i will caution that and i know this is it's it's an incredibly long when people hear our time frames it seems incredibly long um there there is a, a delay currently because of covid we, we were none of our projects moved through the bidding process so we have quite a backlog right now of projects <laughs> to get through so I think, you know, we'll, we put those times out, but, you know, don't hold this to it right now because we have a lot of catching up to do. There's a lot of parks, a lot of parks in your district as well that we need to, you know, start working on, so. Yeah, um, totally understandable. 2021 kind of, you know, hey, this is where we're at. Yeah. Um, I, I did just want to ask, whenever you guys do the construction, do you basically shut the entire park down? Does that mean that two parks in the neighborhood are gonna be shut down kind of simultaneously there? I mean, we shut down the area. We don't shut down the entire park, but you know, we'll shut down the playground. I mean, I assume with Aurora's project, we'll keep that path open in the middle, but mm -hmm. you know, either side will probably be closed off for the entirety of the project you know, for safety. Yeah. All right, thank you, appreciate it. Anyone else? Okay, Josephine, do you see anybody? I, cause I, I, I didn't realize I was on mute. I'm sorry. I said Dan Hedix had a question, and I, I don't see him. Yeah, now. it was it was the nature trail and the oh, paving okay. for the trail. Okay. <laughs> and the irrigation. So and and volunteers from the Owls Head. So Perfect. I think that's been fully covered. That's great. Okay. Well, if there are no additional questions, um, I want to thank the Parks Department. These are both really, really interesting projects. And I'm sorry, um, yeah. uh, I thought you were still taking questions from the committee. Um, I'm sorry, it, it, okay, John, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Um, well, I just want to start off to say, um, I'm a little concerned about this, um, uh, the basketball area. Um, I was at the meeting in the fall and, um, you know, there was no mention of, you know, talk of the basketball area. And I was told to, um, you know, I did email um, Aurora, I believe, in October, and I didn't get a response to, you know, find out any information about that. And now we're seeing a schematic, uh, a diagram, and, um, and we still are including the basketball areas in this in this project, I assume, 50% uh, of the landmass of the project. And I, I mean, we haven't seen anything about that. So I'm a little concerned about that. Um, so oh. I don't even know how to comment on that if I we have no information on that as of yet. John, I just would just like to refer back to, um, as I mentioned before, about the, the, um, the meeting that we had and reported on in September. I happen to have my notes here. So the mm -hmm. Alphabet Park Basketball Courts Project, which is also funded by Councilman Brannon, includes the reconstruction of the basketball courts. It's a different project than what we're discussing this evening. The design okay. is set to begin in the fall of 2020, and the construction is to begin by the fall of 2022, to be completed by the fall of 23. The two projects in Owl's Head, uh, which means this project and the, and the uh, playground project, uh, may be combined as uh, one project as a cost savings measure, but I don't know if that is in fact the case. That was what was reported way back when. So it is, it is the basketball courts are being considered, but as a separate project. 
It's in design right now. It just started. Okay. So you're gonna, you guys are gonna completely, totally see it in in a in a couple months. Oh, um, okay, great, and, great. Yeah, because and, um, we, we, yeah. Uh, well, then, then just to comment on the parts that uh, are incorporated in your plan now. Um, so I see you've closed off, you know, Aurora mentioned uh, one of the pathways from the spray park to the basketball courts, which is, you know, a great idea. Um, the other way, I, I mean, part of the problem, you know, part of a, a dangerous situation was, I know there's a gate there, um, but the, the spray park with the little children just wandering onto the basketball courts, you know, yeah. is, is it, is it a less, you know, walkway right from spray park to basketball courts the way you have it set up? Yeah, it's not direct at all um, now. And, you know, we, I mean, I don't know, Rachel and Chris, but we could provide a gate. I think we initially were not going to, but um, because it, like I said, it is, it's really not direct. You have to kind of go around the top of the proposed design, but you know, we're still we look into that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, well the, the other thing is, I mean, here's, here's the situation and, you know, and I think uh, Roman might be someone as well, who's, uh, you know, been using this park for 20 years, uh, you know, with my three children and also the basketball courts, you know, people coming to play in the basketball courts and using the entrance, I mean, many people, teens, and you know, bunches of teens walking through, they go through the spray park to get to the basketball court. Um, it's just, it doesn't seem like it's very well designed uh, in that respect. So you have, you know, the wrong people entering through the spray park with the little children there and it becomes, you know, uh, you know, also dangerous in that respect. So that, that whole thing, I was hoping that this redesign would push the spray park next to the actual playground and have the entrance way somehow be the divider. I know that would be changing the entrance way to the whole park, but you know, you can see what I'm getting at there. So I just want to leave that at that. The last thing about this that I know might be part of this plan, that fence that you're saying, I know everyone's loving the nature trail, by the way, the nature trail, I mean, it's a very small area. So it's not really that much, you know, it's a nice little thing. I'm sure you have there. Um, and I see the kids playing in there all the time. Question, that fence between the basketball court and the nature trailing area, how tall is that? We just have a low fence right now. It's mm -hmm. uh, a foot and a half. Um, well, anything that kids could climb over and enter directly, they're not only going to be entering directly to the basketball court, they're going to enter directly. I mean, I don't know what the new layout's going to be, but where these benches are, where a lot of adults and teens are all hanging out right adjacent to where you're gonna put this nature trail. And like right now, as you say, there's little kids crawling around in there and like popping out off the basketball court, you know, and it, you know, and uh, you know, some of the more, you know, senior members of the basketball community there are like worrying about these kids. And yeah. Going getting... So yeah, any, any entrance from this nature trail onto the basketball area, like the fence can't be high enough. Let's put it okay. That way. No, that's, I mean, it's good to know. Um, we, yeah, I mean, I think we could look definitely. Yeah, we we could definitely, we'll look at that. We'll look, yeah. We'll yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you get what I'm saying with the people that might be sitting on the benches and I'm not, you know, totally. you know, you know, sometimes beverages and something, you know, it's just not the air. It's yeah. not really the place that you want your little kids coming out of. So, Last thing I want to ask is, so there will be an indication of when the plan comes out for the basketball area because, yeah. um, and I, I just want to say one, one thing about that so you keep it in your minds. Trees inside the basketball footprint are, are not advantageous. It's a very hazardous situation because of the leaves, if, unless they're evergreens. And um, trees overhanging the basketball area, uh, the leaf situation you know, it's just, uh, it's a disaster in the basketball area. And, um, you know, there's no need to have these trees inside the basketball area. I mean, evergreens, yes, but not leafy trees. Um, anyway, I'll talk more about this when you have that, um, you know, meeting on that. Thank you very much. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. Marty? Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to echo what Mr. Vazano was saying about the, the fences. As I understand it, the trend is moving away from fenced areas 
to more of an open concept, which I really appreciate from a beauty standpoint. But as a mom of two young kids who often wander away the minute I check my phone, talk to the person I'm with, I really appreciate the way that a fenced area allows kids to play in a less supervised way than if it's an open area adjacent to something else um, where they could possibly go. There's a certain security, especially with kids in like, I don't know, seven, eight and under group, just knowing that they're there and there's a fence that they can't get over, through, around, under, Mm -hmm. And um, I can just let them be in, in peace for a few minutes. Yeah. So, but I understand the tension between what you're trying to achieve with the feeling of openness and generosity that not having a fence provides. Um, and I also wanted to talk about these, um, you know, the horse, the owl and the whale. Um, I think that they are really important to try to preserve because they're what make, make you know that you're in a New York City park. You know, you see those and it connects you to the past. Um, the, the, yes, the playground equipment is dated and needs to go, it needs an upgrade, but I would like people to see these um, relics from uh, a different time preserved in any way that uh, you could make happen. I think, I think a lot of us would really love that incorporated into the new design. Yeah. Thank you, Marty. Roman? No, actually, Marty summed everything up perfectly. Just the owl, the horses, and the whale. Okay, thank you. And Doris? Um, I would like to reiterate the importance of fences. I really appreciate the idea of the open space and an open access. However, um, you, the, the, the issue of children needing, not wanting to wander, you don't want them wandering off. But in, in another problem that we have found in our community is that sometimes parks are abused at night by um, pretty basically just teenagers hanging out. And um, this park has a very good volunteer system. And if there are gates and if it requires, then they could be locked. Um, I, you, I'm sure you guys know that at the park behind Fort Hamilton High School, there are issues with locking the park. There have been many other parks. So I think removing fencing and gates um, could have serious vandalism issues, raise serious vandalism issues that unfortunately we address all the time. Thank yeah. you, Doris. Okay, Roman, do you wanna talk again? Your hand is still up. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry, I don't zoom too often. That's okay, that's okay. Um, anyone else? Well, these were all very, very thoughtful conversations and, and perspectives, and I appreciate everyone sharing your ideas. Um, we look forward to um, moving forward on these projects. And um, I um, yeah, Diane, I just wanted to ask Parks if we're required. Um, do you need something in writing uh, approving the designs as submitted? That would be great. Okay, yeah, Diane, we typically do for the design presentation, um, formalize uh, the committee's okay. comments or, you know, support in the form of a letter. Okay, so, um, so does that require a motion? It would, yeah, we would need a motion. Okay, so I will entertain a motion from any of the committee members um, to approve the designs. Do you want them separately or do you want them as a combined um, so we did, so we actually did the polling questions by park. So maybe we'll start with the first JJ Cardi park. Okay. So um, for the JJ Cardi proposal, is there a motion? Would somebody like to? So moved. Okay, right. thank you, Dan. And we need a second. A second to that motion. Chris, okay, Chris. Thank you. All right, I'm going to launch polling. So this is for committee members only. Um, if you could please take a moment. We love this feature. So do I. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the motion carries. And we have... Uh, Thank you, everybody. Thank yeah. you. And then we'll move to um, Alice Head. 
And so I will have, if someone would uh, present a motion uh, for Owl's Head. Thank you, Henry. I'll second that. Dan, thank you. And you'll give us the polling feature. Yes. Um, sorry, bear with me. That's okay. Okay, should be up. Do you see it? Okay. And um, we have motion carries, all in favor. Okay. Great, okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Let's see, close. So there being no other business this evening, um, uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. <laughs> thank you all. I'd like to thank everyone from the community as well as thanking everyone from the Parks Department for this wonderful presentation and for your thoughtful input.